Okay. Now, this one we're going to zoom in, and if you're paying attention, you may have already seen the thing I'm trying to hide from you, but what's the diagnosis? Good, yes, yes, all of you got it. This is chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis, CNH, okay? And the reason I'm zooming in is because to me, the most helpful feature for CNH are these little clustered tiny blood vessels in the dermis right next to this fibrin, fibrinoid necrosis, okay? I think these vessels are so characteristic and usually, just you show me this and I can say, this is gonna be CNH. Except this one time that I was so sure it'd be CNH. And I was looking at the slide and I was like, don't tell me the history. And I went on and on describing how it was gonna be CNH and it was from the forearm. And I, every time I said something was gonna be CNH I, and that resident was around, um, I always, um, is Dr. McCaslin who's graduated previously. I was always like, oh, uh, Lauren McCaslin will never believe me because I, there was that time I was so sure, and then it was forearm CNH. And I even went back, I was like, surely this is swapped. I just couldn't let go of the fact and eventually I had to just accept that I was wrong. So maybe the vessels aren't 100% specific, but they're pretty darn good, okay? Now let's go back to low power and start again. See, this is, this is like my confession time. I get to tell you guys all the ways that I've made mistakes and messed up, and, um, and it, it soothes my soul and atones for my errors, so. Here is cartilage, okay? And some, oh, the forearm CNH, someone asked what it was. I actually don't know. I just ended up saying there's reactive vessels and some, and obviously there was no cartilage under it since, you know, it was the forearm, but um, I could never figure out what it was. It was no tumor and I just had to be descriptive. So it was very unsatisfying for multiple reasons. And yeah, I was always embarrassed around Dr. McCaslin. Anytime I was, if she ever watched this video, she's probably gonna be unhappy that I, I called her out by name, but well, here we are. So um, yeah, but every time I was like, oh, this is great CNH. And then I was like, oh, she'll never believe, she'll say, mm -hmm, I bet it's the forearm, isn't it? So anyway, it was a nice running joke. So here's the cartilage, okay? And it's great when you have the cartilage. And the idea is that CNH, for, for those of you who don't know, is often a painful nodule that tends to ulcerate either on the helix or the anti-helix. And I think that it, I've, some people told me the anti-helix is actually more commonly where you see it, okay? But if you see anti-helix or helix of the ear and you get um, a painful nodule clinically, the differential usually is between squamous cell carcinoma and, um, and chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis, okay? And someone asked, can diffuse thermal angiomatosis have similar looking vessels? Yes. Uh, Dr. Neimeyer, that's a great question. It can. And the, the concept here is very similar. Diffuse dermal angiomatosis uh, for everyone here is, this, this, um, uh, is a process where you get reactive proliferation of blood vessels in the dermis due to chronic ischemic change. We see that kind of pattern on the lower leg in people with arterial insufficiency over long term. They don't have good arterial flow. The leg is kind of got a chronic hypoxia, chronic low level ischemia, and the dermis is trying to com compensate for that and growing new blood vessels to better oxygenate the skin. That's the basic simple way I think of it. We also see diffuse dermal angiomatosis on the breast, on larger breasts, particularly in people that have an underlying coag issue or are smokers, and they get this really brisk reactive proliferation of vessels in the dermis, okay? And I've seen similar changes in the dermis over top of calciphylaxis. Um, actually, if you wanna see an example of that, I did a video for the College of American Pathologists. It's not on my YouTube channel yet, it's on their website though, and I'll, I'll send you guys a link later. And for those of you watching on YouTube, I'll try to remember to put that down in the video description. Um, and I show a nice example of a case of a calciphylaxis that had really robust diffuse dermal angiomatosis. Usually I would say that the one thing that would help me here, Dr. Neimeyer, is the vessel changes here are just right here. There's a little bit out here, but by the time you're out there or over here, the vessels are relatively normal looking out here. We're just back to their really cooked sun damaged skin. All the vascular changes are right here under this impending ulcer and near this fibrinoid necrosis. They're right around the edge. It's usually a zone of fibrinoid necrosis with a little edge of these vessels, okay? So the idea behind what causes CNH, what, what we think is that uh, particularly in older adults and you know the ears sometimes grow larger as people get older and as people sleep, if they sleep on their side, the idea is that the ear being compressed between the head and the pillow for hours on end at night pushes the blood basically out of the tissue and they begin to get tissue ischemia and that ischemia eventually starts to kill part of the dermis. And the evidence that we have for this is that we get this reactive vessel change 
that is the kind of vessels just like we see in, in other ischemic, uh, chronic ischemic conditions. Um, and then also we begin to get little zones, sometimes it's small, sometimes it's a big zone of fibrinoid necrosis. Basically the idea is that this portion of the dermis is starting to die. And then around it, we've got the vessels that are reacting, trying to bring in more blood flow. Part of the cartilage often starts to die and degenerate. Now, what does degenerated cartilage look like? Well, I look at a lot of cartilage because I am also a bone and soft tissue pathologist. And I have a hard time honestly explaining. I'll tell you what degenerated cartilage looks like is cartilage underneath CNH. I know it's degenerated because I know this is CNH. So you see the cartilage being there is not really the, the take home. The take home stuff is this, that's the diagnosis there, not the cartilage. But I would say that the cartilage usually has a smooth edge and in CNH, if you begin to get kind of individual chondrocyte clusters that kind of intermingle with the fibrous layer, I think this is like perichondrium, the fibrous layer around the cartilage, and it kind of starts to kind of space out a little bit, gets more pink looking, the color kind of starts changing. But I'll tell you, cartilage can have a lot of variability in its color depending on how the H&E stain is. So from lab to lab, and even sometimes from case to case, cartilage can look different. Sometimes it's really deep purple blue, other times not so much. Sometimes it has actually a pink kind of color, even in more normal situations. So I really don't rely as heavily on recognizing the degenerated cartilage. Um, and again, I'm someone who looks at cartilage a lot. I rely on this stuff to tell me if I'm dealing with CNH, coupled with the clinical scenario. You know, it's, it can't be on the forearm, it's gotta be on the ear. But um, I think it's, um, so it's nice when you see the cartilage, but you don't have to. If you just have a shave right through here and it's on the helix, that's CNH, we're done. And so then the idea is that as the dermis dies, the epidermis doesn't like having dead dermis underneath it. And so it tries to kind of reach down and grab that dead dermal collagen and fibrin and push it out. And that's called transepidermal elimination phenomenon. We see that in perforating disorders. We see that in, the, in foreign bodies, like splinters and other foreign bodies. The epidermis opens up and tries to extrude and push that, that foreign material out. And that's the same kind of concept that happens here. This stuff has become foreign and, and not what the body wants to have anymore. It's dead. So it's trying to push it out. And so sometimes in early CNH, there will be some epidermal um, acanthosis, but it won't be ulcerated yet. In more advanced examples, it will actually have a full-blown ulcer. So you don't have to have the ulcer there, but if you do, it's nice. But here we have one that's kind of like right on the verge of ulcerating, or maybe it's ulcerated a little bit further back and we're just not in the right plane of section uh, to see it, okay? So nice example of chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis. Let me show you another really dramatic example of it. And again, don't expect it to look this good always. It's usually a lot more subtle. But here's one where they actually did like a wedge. And this is a case I ended up seeing in consult. I still don't fully understand why um, such a dramatic procedure was done. If they thought that if they were really worried it was a squame or if it was really painful, I don't know. The treatment, by the way, for CNH is oftentimes getting a donut pillow, right? So people lay on it and their ear doesn't get compressed and it allows the ear to not have that pressure-induced ischemia. Um, what other situation causes pressure-induced ischemia in the body? Not so much in the skin, but elsewhere in the body. This is good because we can tie all of these kind of unrelated diseases together with a common uh, underlying um, you know, uh, biologic or, or pathologic concept. Yes, yeah, sacral decubitus ulcer, right, exactly. It's the same kind of concept in decubitus ulcer and also in ischemic fasciitis, which is kind of on a, is kind of related to the changes you see under a decubitus ulcer. They both get this kind of ischemic fibrinoid necrosis and have proliferating vessels because of pressure-induced ischemia over a long time. Good. So here's the example. We can see the nice cartilage of the ear. Here's the helix up here, and look at that. You can see this is a, a really good one. It's got the acanthotic epidermis kind of reaching down. It's got the ulcer where the, the dead and dying cartilage and dermis are being pushed out. It's got those little tiny vessels clustered together right at the periphery. It's got a little bit of fasciitis like reactive myofibroblastic stuff. And then look, now that's cartilage that anyone can say, that's not happy cartilage, right? It's just like fragmenting apart and, and coming out. And you can see the color change too. Look, you know, see down here, there is some pink in there, but it really gets kind of bright pink color, starts changing its color and its orientation, and it's fragmenting and breaking away and being extruded out. So definitely a really dramatic example of CNH here. And this is a great one for teaching, but I've never seen another one this dramatic, and I've never seen another one where it was wedged out with a, with a you know, an actual wedge that took a piece of the, uh, the uh, articular, I'm sorry, not articular, the uh, cartilage of the, uh, the helix here.
So pretty dramatic example. Let's go over here to this side of the sea. See on this side, you can't see the ulcer. So it's just a matter of sectioning, um, but you can still see those vessels. And here you actually see a piece of that dying cartilage getting close to being pushed out. So pretty, pretty fun case, nice example of chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis CNH.